Hey everyone, sorry for this delayed 10th uh, episode, I believe, of TLO Party, but I was distracted a bit by the Sheth replay pack, as well as just some other things I had going on. But uh, bringing you back here with this 10th episode, it's going to be a ZVP on in Toon Valley, so let's get right into the game. Here in the top left we have our Zerg from Team Liquid spawning in the blue. It is none other than TLO himself. And in the bottom right, we have a uh, somewhat unknown player from the F Team Fanatic Academy. It is the Protoss player, Ares, spawning as red. And uh, I, I don't know, I know next to nothing about this player. Um, he really hasn't had much action, any sort of anything that I've seen as far as I know. Um, he had, was added to the Academy in February, which was some time ago, but I've heard no real results from him. But I bet he spent his time practicing his butt off because, I mean... If you're going to be on an academy for a pro team like Fnatic, you got to put your time in. And they're really committing to you to uh, improve as a player. So he's probably just been up to that. And I'm excited to see what he can bring in this game. He is starting off with a pylon in base as opposed to at the front. So it will not be a standard Forge fast expand play. We'll likely see one of those one gate core expands that uh, we've seen a bit from Axlab and Noni. And I'm excited to see what exactly he decides to do with that. Whereas TLO, we have no sort of early pool for him, so nothing early to really comment on other than that uh, in base pylon, so discuss the map for a bit. It's um, a bit more unbalanced when in the ZVT matchup, but Zergs really just don't like this map so much. Uh, they're starting to get used to it and find strategies for it, but these rocks are a pain in the butt, and it makes the third base harder to take for Zerg early on without units, and it makes the third base a lot easier for Protoss to secure at some point. It's uh, not like Terran with siege tanks up in here, but it's really easy to defend with force fields and stuff since there's uh, basically just this ramp and da -da -da -da, this ramp right here. But we do have the pool coming out for TLO at a fairly normal time. Uh, the first scouting worker for Ares will go in the wrong direction first. It'll spin around and go the other way in a second. So he will not get quite to see what is up, but he's not really missing out on anything by scouting at this point in time. Tilo will probably be looking to drop his own hatchery somewhat soon because he is not scouting at all and he will not know that this little uh, not immediate expansion is going down for our Protoss player. Getting that Cybernex core and gas right off the bat and he'll have enough for Warp Gate and uh, perhaps a Stalker right when that finishes, skipping a Zealot entirely. So he will be going straight for that Stalker play to save minerals early on with before spending them on a Zealot. So, but, And he's not really in any sort of danger so that's a good play by him. Uh, this drone's going to go up and try to take this third base now that there's been a pylon block over here. Oh, the probe's just going to block over there, but Tilo is content taking this third base location instead. And we'll take this as soon as he can as well. A couple of Zerglings moving over to push that probe away. And he will do a good job forcing him out and will likely bring a drone down to take that base any moment now. But uh, he still has not scouted, so he does not know exactly what he's up against. And the warp gate is started. And uh, Ares, uh, he, the potential for a four gate is also there. He's not taking the second gas quite yet, but um, that'll be a bit unexpected of a play. I want to see what this probe does. He's, he's not going to go out to scout, I don't think. He's going to drop a nexus, so no sort of four gate or anything here. Just a one gate expand play, getting a stalker out to help defend, and then a pylon on the low ground to help warp and defend as well. Probe will take the center Zelnaga tower, and still no drone scout uh, for TLO, so he still has no idea what his Protoss opponent is up to. And he'll come over here and see that there is no forge at all and that his opponent has actually begun to tech already, which would be completely unexpected. So Ares is in a really good spot here because Tilo really can't, he can't do nothing to punish this at all. He's already got the three hatcheries down with no gas. Uh, beginning to work on the rocks, I think. Yep, a couple of Zerglings doing that for a little bit. Look we'll to move some of these drones down sometime soon, I would like to think. Uh, this Stalker's going to be actually very pesky. Uh, it's going to be great against the low amount of Zerglings present right now. And he is not he's not expecting the Stalker, and now he knows that something is a bit weird, probably. Because a Forge Fast Expanding opponent would not have a Stalker out this quickly, for sure. Certainly not across the map trying to pressure with just that one Stalker. But a, bunch of Zergling, a couple more Zerglings being forced out by that Stalker. He's over trying to do some damage over here, but the Queen will force that Stalker out. The probe returns to the Zonlaga Tower and runs away, but he might be moving out to place a proxy pylon, potentially. Uh, we do see a couple more gates coming down on, on the low ground as the wall, and with that sentry there, he's safe from pretty much anything TLO can throw at him. And he'll have four gates. He might be able to might try to apply a little pressure. He actually will try to drop this pylon, but he gets noticed immediately, so he should just cancel that. And where's the cancel areas? There it is. Okay, and two gas going on the main for TLO. Done now, so starting to mine that gas up, and going to use that to 
begin his late teching process after the three hatch opening with a number of queens. He has, looks like three queens out right now and a couple, one more making at least. And it will be roaches for TLO. Uh, there's the roach worn going down right now. So the gas will be for those. We might get circling speed as well, just as a... I mean, it's always good to have a circling speed. Uh, chances are we'll be using them later on in the game for counterattacks or even part of your unit composition at some point in the game. So it's good to have that circling speed researched if you can. Using a bunch of these extra lings to uh, clear out these rocks, and that stalker kind of forced those lings, so that was a good play by Ares. Uh, those lings could have been a bunch of drones, or perhaps even some of those minerals could have gone to roaches. So a good play by him to force that. Uh, two gas going down on the low ground. Four Ares looking to begin to tech as well. He will be going double Stargate, actually, uh, in his main base. So this could be very interesting. He's just going to go into a heavy Phoenix transition, and making two Phoenix at a time will be a huge commitment of his resources. So they will have to be effective. They will at least clear out some overlords at the very least. And we'll have to see what else they can do. Maybe pick up a couple queens. But uh, TLO right now, I don't think he even has, does he even have an Evo chamber? He does not. So he'll be rel relying entirely on queens for the defense. And yeah, so let's see. Yep, just Phoenix right now. Um, I'll likely see maybe another gate or two sometime soon as well for Ares. We do have a macro hatch coming from TLO, I think. No, that's the lair. Never mind. I misread that little thingamajig in the top left so he's getting that layer up and he should with that layer he'll probably take these two gas down here and maybe even the two over here as well well to see how heavy he wants to tech into something we see a robo coming up for areas as well to add on to those phoenix and that might just be for observers or perhaps a colossus transition the circling speed now on the way for tlo and two evo chambers and the phoenix will only move out and the zergling sees them and I think that's the first time he's seen these phoenixes, and we'll see if he, have to see if he can drop spores in time. He cannot, and he should start them pretty soon, though. And some queens might be in danger here. Going to go after these overlords for a quick second and lift one of the queens, and he'll definitely get this one queen. It does take four phoenix uh, to kill a queen with a single lift. But, uh, oh, it does not even quite get it, so he did not engage that as probably as he could have. And one phoenix does go down, and I don't think Ares uh, actually killed anything with any of these phoenix. Yeah, they all have zero kills, it still seems. So, a good little defense there uh, at the beginning by TLO of these Phoenix. They'll move in again. We do see four more gates and a robotics bay coming down for Ares, so he'll be probably transitioning out of these Phoenix pretty soon. He is making two more right now, and actually going to be air upgrade, so he will not be transitioning out. He might be going uh, air unit Colossus, which Voidray Colossus was a popular build back in the day. Um, it, was very, it was just a very strong build overall, but I'm not really sure about the air weapon upgrade choice right here um we do have an observer coming out as well and we had four gates on the way so i think so there are the four gates that were present and we should have a total of eight gates at some point in time here we have yep we have eight gates total once they all finish phoenix moving in again to try and do what they can but there are a ton of queens here and they take down phoenix in no time not even a queen kill there and these phoenix have proven to be i mean they are getting some good scouting but that's about it right now and these queens are doing a heck of a good job I go for a couple of drone kills right here and just go for this, get this Overlord and run. There is a Spore Crawler as well, even a Transfuse in the Overlord. Good move by TLO, saving resources whenever he can. So now Ares probably just looked to clear out a bunch of these Overlords. It's not a whole lot else he can do. TLO, you, with this small little Roachling army, will secure the middle of the map and that mm -hmm. Zelnaga Tower. But the Observer for Ares moving over as well to get vision of the enemy's base. But their Spore Crawlers from the Phoenix will do a good job against the Observer as well, because they can detect it. Fourth Nexus on the way for Ares, dropping even um, a forge in a gateway just as part of the wall to try and just help defend this third base a little bit more. I'd like to see that maybe up here at the ramp a bit more, but uh, looks like he may try that now as well. Or he might be swallowing off so you cannot get in this way and sweep in from this sort of direction. But um, so interesting little SimCity there by Ares. We'll have to see how useful that is later on. This overlord spots this double gas timing and the expansion timing, so he knows exactly what his opponent is doing, and has a fourth hatch going up as well, with a couple of spores already there to defend against any Phoenix play. Big probe transfer going over for Ares to that third base, and the supplies are pretty even right now, but, uh, oh, we have some interesting little tactics from TLO. Where is the building I'm looking for? There it is. We have the Nidus Network. I'm curious to see what he tries to do with that. Um, usually you see this in conjunction with Hydras to some extent, but he doesn't have Hydras, but he will have Infestors, and he's just going to pile them all in there. Where is the Nidus Worm going down? He has an Overseer over here to spot, and oh, here's the Nidus Worm right here, and we'll have to see what exactly he can do with this. Uh, Ares will have heard that Nidus Worm sound. A bunch of roaches might be in there as well. well what is in that Nidus Worm? Oh, some Queens too. It's just Queens and Infestors. A very interesting little attack here. 
I'm curious to see what he can do with this army exactly. And but here's the little defensive force, and he, it's a touch out of position, but it's right on that little bridge. He can move over really quickly to deny this force. But um, there's really no support with the queens and infestors. That's a very wonky unit composition. I don't really know how I feel about it. We have a very early mothership on the way for the uh, Protoss player, and as two queens get cut off, infestors dropping some infested Terrans. But this is like with force fields and colossus, there is no way. Uh, for Tilo to do anything here, and I think this nice one may have been a uh, bit of a waste of an investment as all of these queens will likely go down as they try to waddle back. And oh, they will get lifted too. Good maneuver over there, but a uh, big fungal on all the Phoenix, but the Infestors uh, can't really risk moving in too far to fight the Colossus, but the fungals continue to go down on the Phoenix. He always can uh, retreat quickly into that Nidus Worm if he wants to, and there he does go. He will not quite get the Phoenix, but he does a bunch of damage to them. And well defended by Ares, as he f uh, that was a good trade for him. The force fields and the ramp were good. Cut off a of queens and killed a bunch of queens. So well done by him. And he's on that uh, nice strong three base, and he's able to get a really big army up. With and with that mothership support, he'll be in very good shape. Tilo's hive is only halfway done. He does have a spire on the way, so that broodlord transition will be quick. Plus two, plus two upgrades on the way as well, and only the plus one armor on the way for Prodos. Uh, he has that plus one attack already, but that is about it. And he's definitely way behind in the upgrades. That's one advantage Tilo certainly has. But Ares is taking this opportunity. He has a small supply lead, and he'll be pushing out across the map to at least a nice and creep tumors. And this infestor is helping it. Infestor. Observer certainly helping out a lot with that little task. And these roaches might find themselves lifted as well, and they do. Good pick off by Ares, taking out units wherever he can, snagging a couple of those roaches before the units can move over. And he will return to taking care of some of that creep. Oh, we do have an, oh, I thought it was another nice worm, which is a bunch of zerglings. My bad over there watching the map. But uh, Arius is, he has a pretty big army right now, and TLO is kind of trying to get to that hive state, uh, making a bunch of Zerglings and a couple Corruptors to try and deal with this army, but this army is pretty fearsome. And it looks like Arius is just playing it really patiently. He's cons I don't think he really should move in. TLO probably has a very good defensive posture. A bunch of spine crawlers going up. Uh, actually, there's all spore crawlers. Uh, oh, there's a spine there too. Weird little mix, but the spore crawlers can shoot the Colossi. Uh, Phoenix trying to move in, but they'll run into the Corruptors, and TLO will now have a pretty good idea of what the tech I, tech choice will be soon for TLO. And with the Corruptors, I mean, that just basically means Broodlords at some point. We do see the Greater Spires halfway done for TLO, and he makes more Corruptors as well. We do see War Prism speed coming at the uh, Robotics Bay. So, cool idea there from Ares. He's going to try and do some War Prism harass as TLO does this double expansion up here and up to six bases if he begins to mine from those. Might at least want to get the gas at a fifth base, and he will drop gas immediately. Fourth, fourth Nexus also going out for Ares, who's in a very, very good spot right now. Um, oh, that Burrowed Zerling actually sees this War Prism, so he knows that the capability for the War Prism harass is actually present. So, good little Burrowed Zerling scout by TLO. As both players are setting up for a late, late game very soon, it's going to come down to the late game control and army positioning. So I'm, I mean, so it's like a, it's all going to come down to that. So we'll have to see how both players do. This early mothership for Ares will be pretty useful. It will have uh, enough energy for two vortexes much sooner than, uh, well, obviously a later mothership. I'm curious to see what this war person does. If it's just for unit um, replenishment with the main army, or if he wants to harass with it, I'd like to see some harass. Getting the War Prism speed is a bit of an unnecessary investment if you're not going to try and harass with it, but I mean, it's a personal choice for Ares. T. Lo being very active with this small group of units he has out in the map, just kind of checking for bases and trying to do damage where he can, take out some proxy pylons or scouts perhaps. So good, good maneuver there and good usage of some otherwise useless units. Uh, going to run into these Stalkers, which is a bit of a bit, but the Zerglings are kind of free at this point. Very expendable units, so it doesn't really matter. He's kind of probably trying to lose them anyway for more Broodlord supply. And we do have four Broodlords in production and eight already done, so he's going to have a big army of Broodlords very soon. But here comes Protoss maxed out, a couple of Archons and Vortex ready to go. And he does not quite have the, that double Vortex yet, I do not think. How much energy is Vortex? Yeah, he does not quite have that double Vortex. And but here comes the Infestors trying to delay as they can, but uh, they're going to be very careful. A good Fungal on all of those Phoenix, and the Phoenix will be quite useful against these Broodlords, but not if they're Fungal down almost immediately. The War Prism also caught in the Fungal, if he can get that as well. One more good Fungal will be quite useful, and he does not quite have the energy in that Infestor, and the Phoenix are able to pull back. Does Fungal the Mothership, and a couple of Zealots, uh, but here's a Blink in, going to try and go for some of those um, Infestors, and battle is Otilo backs off. He does not try to fire right here. Great Fungal on all of those Stalkers. And every Stalker you can kill makes his Broodlords even tougher and tougher to kill. It's great fungus on this group of Stalkers. can absolutely destroy them. 
Good maneuver by TLO. And right now, Uskin, he is out controlling areas so far, and he will be pushing the Protoss player back onto his heels. So good defense by TLO, and with his high base count, he should have the slight advantage. But uh, there is a fifth Nexus now done for Aries, not minding the gas here. Might want to get into that. But both players now starting to build that bank. Aries not really macroing up as well as he could. He's way behind in unit supply. And now getting a bunch more units out, but he's still not quite max. Can't remax all at once like TLO can. TLO dropping down two more spires. Does he not doesn't he already have a greater spire? Or where is the greater spire? Did he lose it somehow in there? Because I don't there's no reason to make two spires if you already have a greater spire, but I mean to each their own, I guess, TLO. Uh, make two spires if you want. Three spires always... Three spires is always better than two, you know how they say. Uh, nice one coming down from here from TLO. Looking to reinforce at this expansion if necessary. This is a good technique. Allows you to reinforce very quickly. We'll need to move his own Zergling. Uh, hope he notices that sometime soon. Looks like the drone will just go up and take that basin instead. But a bunch of infestors, they might be able to drop a bunch of infested Terrans behind this mineral line. And indeed, that's exactly what TLO has in mind. This could be a good little maneuver here. I wonder to see how many he can drop. It'll be only a minor harass. He can't quite do that full drop. Never mind. Actually, he's getting a ton of infested Terrans in there. And that will force the army of Arius to go deal with that. And he, TLO could probably sight this Nexus with this army. And indeed, he indeed he will. He needs to scoot forward a little bit more. Not all of his infested Terrans are targeting that Nexus. But uh, it looks like it doesn't matter that much. And he will get the entire thing. And Arius is a bit hesitant with his army. He kind of went back a little bit and then decided to push forward and then pulled back a bit even more. But uh, you can't, you cannot be indecisive at this point in the game. But right now he's decided to go and he's pushing out once again across the map, changing his whole spot. Everything that's going on. These queens caught in the process of laying a bunch of creep tumors, unfortunately destroyed in the act of procreation. But here they come, moving in again. The Protoss army and Tilo. His army does it. Let's see where what is looking at. He does have so many broodlords right now, up to do, 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 15 broodlords and making even a couple more. 17 broodlords. Uh, but he needs to watch out for that Vortex. It's be very important. And here, Cross is coming in at the somewhat undefended side of the base. This gives TLO an opportunity to use the Broodlord Chasm here to uh, really defend his Broodlords and keep them safe from the Blink Stalkers. And looks like TLO is basically trying to sacrifice all that static defense. But here comes his army. No, he will back off again. Oh, Broodlord's being caught in the middle of it. And TLO needs to engage because otherwise the Stalkers blink right under. You need to see some fungals very soon. There are some good fungals going down, catching the Warp Prism in a bunch of Stalkers. Brewlord's raining down, and one Vortex does go down, doesn't really, oh, what did that catch? I think it maybe caught a bu bunch of Infestors, I only see four Infestors right there, yeah, it looks like it caught a couple of Infestors, but not too many of the Brewlords, not the best use of a Vortex there, but uh, he does have enough energy for another one, if he so desires, and he will move again on this base, and we'll see if he can take it down before TLO gets into position. Uh, the base isn't entirely critical, as TLO does have this 5th and 6th location to mine from, but uh, right now, here's some more fungals going down, and the Broodlords once again fighting. Let's we'll see if we see another Vortex attempt. Uh, none quite yet. Broodlords do force this army off, and the fourth base does stay alive, actually. Uh, the War Prism continuing to be fungled. It is not right now. I want to see. I'd like to see that War Prism off attack. Well, a good fungal on the mothership. Uh, throwing some infested Terrans underneath it as well. But right now, the, all the infestors moving out and getting targeted by the mothership. And the fungals continue to go down on it, but there's not a whole lot to take care of the mothership right now, other than these infestors. The army of Pross is pushed back, and this mothership is completely isolated. It looks like it will go down. Good play by Tilo once again, and he will force the Protoss army back once more. He will need to start that mothership immediately. Uh, plus three ground weapons on the way for the Protoss player as well. Ten infestors on the way for Tilo at once. Ground carapace level three as well, and flyer carapace level one. And Tilo is pursuing quite strongly with these broodlords. Uh, needs to make sure, be careful not to overextend with this army. Without the mothership, it's kind of hard to lose too many of these broodlords to a bunch of blink stalkers, but. You really need to be careful and protect as many of them as you can. Like, morphing your Broodlords here is not the best idea, to be perfectly frank. But, I mean, if Tilo gets away with it, uh, no problem, really. But Blink Stalker's moving across the map once again, and at the Zalaga Tower, he will see this. We'll just see some Fungals here to deny their Blinks. And there's one uh, decent Fungal holding back that group of Stalkers. A bunch of Chainslings moving up to be really annoying. Stalkers do go down. Not too many. There's only five there, so not a really big deal for Ares. He can afford to lose that. But it looks like Tilo is looking to push forward. With this army of broods, I think he should have a pretty successful push here. He has 19 broodlords on the map and 15 infestors around. But a great blank on. And he targets a lot of infestors. Almost all of the infestors go down. Without those infestors, he's in a tough spot. But, um, there is a bunch of energy still left on these few infestors. But a good blink in once again. He'll target some more broodlords down. And I just from just probably up in the middle of battle to kind of distract some of the uh, enemy units. Archon's looking to see what they can do as well, but they will get targeted down by the Broodlords, and the Blink Stalker's doing great damage as well on TLO. They have overextended a bit, uh, despite the fact they had a very, very strong army. 
and his Brubar counter is getting significantly taken down, but uh, all the Blink Stalkers for areas are going down as well. But uh, 14 Stalkers morphing in at once, he can replenish those numbers very quickly, much faster than Tilo can replenish Broodlords, but Tilo still has 15 Broodlords and 9 Infestors, despite how much, how much supply he lost in that battle. And TLO continues to upgrade as well, uh, getting plus, plus 3 missile attack for the infested Terrans, plus 2 melee attack for any sort of Zerblings he decides to put in later in the game. 14 Corruptors in the way to deal with a Mothership Colossus and to turn their Broodlords, and plus 2 fire attacks as well. Uh, the Mothership is almost done again for Ares as he makes another round of 14 Stalkers. It's an insane amount of warp gate production. One Archon wandering it out more than he should have. And this siege is actually going to be pretty brutal for Ares. Um, he really needs to find a better position to attack from. He might want to come in from the back, or maybe even go for a bit of a counterattack. It looks like that might be what he's trying to do. No, he does start to push back and try to flank. He will snipe off these Corruptors immediately. Those won't be Broodlords anytime soon, so good little maneuver there by Ares. But uh, the Infestor count right here, the Broodlords, is still only 7. Um, and energy is getting there, but it's still not the best. He needs to be really careful with this Broodlord pack. But this 4th base is in big danger for Protoss. Tilo taking <laughs> these, these uh, aggressive bases, might want to look to take this one as well soon, but uh, right now Tilo's occupied a lot of the map, and Ares has very few places to expand to. The fourth Nexus does go down. Good play from Tilo, and it's the, the clock is ticking for Ares. He needs to do something about this push, and soon before he loses too much of his infrastructure. A lot of his gateways are going down as well, really going to limit the ability to produce as many Stalkers as he was earlier on. And right now his army's just sitting here trying to build up, getting some more Archons, and he'll be looking for that Archon Toilet. And he does almost have enough energy for the Vortex, but the Broodlords do move up to Siege on the 5th base for Ares. And they're doing, once again, a massive, massive damage. Ares needs to basically not win with this army entirely. He actually still has a bit of a bank left, but his gas is quite low. Good Fungus going down from TLO, once again grabbing a bunch of Stalkers. But right now there's no Broodlord support, he's only taking out Shields. And the Colossus, I mean, the Corrupt is moving in to see what they can do and trying to take out some Colossus. But here comes the army of Ares, and they'll move in and take down this uh, resupply network. And Infestor's kind of waddling into their deaths, uh, getting off some fungals, but not too many. And these, these Broodlords need to be very careful once again, but uh, good fungals in the Mothership. A Vortex does go down, but most of the Broodlords are outside of it. And Tilo should be okay. And the Mothership is almost dead as well. Might want to look to get a fungal or target with some Corruptors if he has any, which he may not actually. Uh, no, he does not have any Corruptors out right now, so the Mothership will last for a while. A good blink in once again. And the Broodlords will turn to find a bit more and take down some of these Stalkers. Infestors dropping some more Infested Terran, but the Infestors are so low on energy now. And it's basically just these Broodlords and the Stalkers doing huge damage to the Broodlords. And Ares is really making a good show of it in this game, but he is behind economically. He's lost both that 4th and 5th Nexus. His 3rd base is almost dry and not many probes at it. His probe count is down to 51, which isn't actually that bad, considering that TLO only has 52 drones as well. Um, and... I mean, this is going to be a close game still. Uh, the banks are now almost gone. Tilo has so much gas, but no mineral income to speak of. He needs more drones somewhere. I don't know where they all are right now. Where are all of Tilo's drones? I have no idea where Tilo's drones are right now. I guess there's a couple down here. I don't know. I mean, Ares probably doesn't know about that base, and it's very exposed. And all of the Broodlords are now gone for Tilo with this last one going down. He only has Infestors and a few Roaches out on the field. And some Zerglings, but... I mean, this army for Ares is not weak either, and this is gonna be this is becoming a very scrappy game. But the income for both players is very low. Um, Tilo is somewhat ahead, but both the Econs are not where they should be at all at this point in the game, and they cannot support these large late tech armies. And it'll be all coming out of crisis management here. Ares finds himself actually with a decent supply lead uh, with a standing army, but the income of Tilo is a touch better. And Tilo is sticking with Broodlords, and that will continue to be his tech of choice, despite the fact that he does not really have the economy to support it with the amount of drones he has. Uh, he still hasn't made any more drones, and he, right now he doesn't really have the ability to do so. He needs to deal with his army and soon. So it's a tough spot for anyone to be in, and this base will certainly go down. A burrow on the drones to try and save them, but uh, is there an observer of this army, actually? It does not look like it, so these drones may actually survive. So a good little burrow idea by Tilo to save what he can. Don't really know what that mac. I guess that macro hash is there to reinforce a bit quicker than any other place. But I mean, oh, we do have a counterattack right here. With these small little unit groups, it's going to matter very, very much when people decide when and where people decide to counterattack. The small group will get taken out, and losing any unit at this point in time is actually bad for either player. Like very, very bad. They do not have economy right now to speak of. So that's a, actually a pretty big load from TLO to lose all of those units for taking nothing out, really. And now it's starting to clear up these creep tumors as well with the observer. Uh, the drones did actually survive, and a Nidus to save the drones as well. Good play from TLO, and saves all of those drones. 
And every drone matters at this point in time. Like I said, he does not have many right now. And investors, a lot of investors on the way for Tiela, which is a good, good choice. Very excellent choice. Because at this point in the game, you really want to rely on uh, energy units. Energy-based units, they regenerate energy. And as long as you keep them alive, they re retain their usefulness uh, over and over again. So, Infestor is a great late-game unit to have. Uh, you can burrow and just run around with them whenever you want to. And right now, Ares is starting to fall behind a bit more. But he does have a bunch of probes at the space. And his income might actually be higher than TLO's. Now, look at that income right now. Uh, a lot closer right now. And... Arius does have the much bigger standing army. If you look at the army supply, it is definitely in Arius' favor. And I would like to see maybe try to do something with this before uh, Tilo catches up with his large amount of bases, because he, he has a ton of bases up. And the drones are now starting to mine somewhat more efficiently. And you can see the well, still the gas. Arius is really going heavy to that gas, but I guess Tilo has really no need for gas considering this little amount right here is still banking 1.2k of it. So it's not something he really needs to worry about. Ares is looking to take another base um, somewhere. Where is that Nexus going down? Oh, looking to retake this fourth base. So a good idea there. Much more Broodlords in the way, though, for TLO. What is this Broodlord count up to? He's actually got a really big army getting going again. Uh, seven done, six on the way. So he'll have 13 Broodlords again. And I'm not sure Ares will be able to really stop that army. Um, there's not a whole lot here. Well, there are a bunch of Stalkers, but there are enough Infestors to really hold all of those Stalkers down if TLO controls properly. And once again, like I said, it'll come down to the late game control, and it's especially when you have low econ like this in the late game. But both players kind of sitting back and letting each other get back to that economy they somewhat want, though neither are making workers, but they're once again starting to build up that army that they're really looking for. The Brutalord count for Tilo is getting just absurd again, considering how, uh, how little he's been mining as of late. And I like to see maybe drop another base, potentially, um, sometime soon. He's going to need all the bases he can, but... I don't know, but he's near... He, nope, neither player's really near Max again, but Tilo decides that now is time to go. He has a huge army of Broodlords right now. Uh, total anti-air. We do have five Archons and that uh, Mothership, so that could be a big moment, but if Tilo splits his Broodlords properly, he should be in good shape. And it's well to see how this push goes. Um, Tilo rearranging his forces once again. is maybe backing off, actually. Nope, he's moving again. And if his, if his Broodlord spread is good, not even a Vortex can save Ares, though he does have two stored up. First Fungal does go down. He can try and take out some Archons before they can be involved in the toilet at all. Is he going to go for the Neural on the Mothership? No, he just fungles it instead to keep it back. Uh, oh, that Mothership's so, sitting so alone. I'd like to see a Neural attempt, and he might move in and try to go for that Neural right here. And is he going to get it? No, he goes for the Fungal instead, and actually all, all the Infestors are Vortexed. He does have one more Vortex, being very careful, though. And is he going to try and put the Archons in there? Or is, uh, it's tough decision making right here. Uh, if Brewlord's once again raining that fire down with the Infestors all in that Vortex. There's not, not a whole lot they can do to hold these Blink Stalkers in place, but they'll pop out right now. Should see some Fungals go down before they get immediately taken out. Optilo not even getting any Fungals off. It looks like maybe one or two, but not a whole lot. And he's pushed back again. And Brewlord's might want to just turn and try to kite a little bit here, and they will do that. Fungal going down, holding a bunch of units in place. And the Stalkers do blink in, though, and they're going to start targeting those Broodlords down. And I think Tilo might be in a bit of a tough spot here. That Infestor Vortex really did a uh, did a number on his army. But Broodlords are still alive right now. Stalkers moving around, sniping them continuously. And it's still going to be close, but I think Tilo might come out a bit behind here. But no, the Stalkers are actually pulling back to these Colossus to help them deal with the Broodlings. And Tilo is going to look to push forward a little bit, even though he has nothing to really deal with this Mothership. Uh, his Infestor count is zero right now. He really needs those Infestors. Vortex does go down, and I think this actually might be a bit of a, a kill, uh, really bad moment for uh, TLO. Brutalord's getting sniped once again. Blink Stalkers, one more blink in. will do some big damage, and there they do go. Brutalord's falling left and right. And it's still so close. And these Crumbs will to go in and clean up that Mothership right now. Uh, and there it does go, and they'll take up the Colossus as well as the Stalkers are busy with the Broodlords. The Broodlords are all going down. Tilo finding himself with a small supply lead. What's he reinforcing in? Uh, looks like a bunch of Zerglings. 53 now on the map, and I think this Tilo switch and going to the low econ unit might might be the take, might give Tilo the edge he needs. They're great against Stalkers. They're doing great damage. Some Zealots being warped into some Lash just defense, but I think it might be a too little too late. Broodlords morphing in as well, and there are just uh, so many Zerglings here, I don't think it even matters. And all the Zealots will want to go down, but Zealots with great upgrades doing a good job against those Zerglings. And continue to be warped in. Uh, the war person will go down as well. Zerglings continuing to do good damage to these ground units, pursuing the stalkers. Corruption even going down. Good use of that corruptor energy. Or a corruptor spell, I guess. What is, is that on the countdown? Oh, it is on a countdown. Okay. I never actually, I just don't pay that much attention to corruption. But uh, the fort pylon will go down, and Arius is now in a bad spot. 
Uh, not a whole lot to deal with these Zerglings. Are, what, is, what sort of units? Do you have any Colossus at all? No splash damage at all against these Zerglings. But a bunch of Zealots will do a good job against them. But the Broodlords, the Broodlords plus these uh, Zerglings should do pretty good. Uh, a couple, a Blinken could be good, but uh, good Micro here by Ares using the Zerglings and making sure he focuses those Stalkers on the Broodlords. And well played by him. He will try to chase down some of those Corruptors. And this game is still not quite over yet. Big Zerling counterattack coming in though for TLO and he will look to do some big economic damage. There is only a couple of cannons here to defend and it looks like they will go down. But the, Ze the Zealots here as well will do a good job defending. But um, looks like TLO is going to uh, ignore the Zealots and go straight for the Focus Fire on the Nexus and he certainly will get that. And that's going to really hamper the economy of the Protoss player. But he will run back once again. But a counterattack here from Ares looking to do some damage of his own. Taking out this expansion before it could do anything. TLO does get the cancel but here's another counter. And the probes are actually uh, trying to defend as well, but the Nexus will go down. And there will be only long distance mining for our Protoss player, whereas TLO still has mining on location. But his drone count is still so low right now, it's uh, still at 50 only. I don't even know where all of his drones are mining from right now. There's a couple here, there's just drones everywhere scattered all over the map. These Blink Stalkers moving in to do what they can, and a couple of Spine Crawlers going to try and deflect them. And TLO moving in with some Zerglings to help defend as well, but he really can't get behind those minerals into those Stalkers, and they're in a great spot. And all of these zealots, and I think TLO is in a bit of a bit of a tough spot here. Uh, the army composition uh, is pretty good right now for Ares. Uh, there are three Brewlords on the map, but they're so slow and just unable to deal with this mobile, the mobile army of the Protoss opponent. And doing big damage here will likely get this base if he wants to focus fire. But here come a bunch of, bunch of corruptors for absolutely no reason whatsoever, dropping corruption where they can. Uh, a fung. We do have a couple of infestors getting back into the field, which will be very useful actually. Taking out a bunch of zealots and the zerglings do clean up. Look like they'll clean up these zealots. So good job there. This base did go down in the top right, though, to the Stalker Force. But uh, if we, we see Infestor go over there and maybe get a good fungal off, those Stalkers could be held down. And Infestors are trying to move over and do what they can. Zerglings might try to engage as well. Uh, Crop is being sent in too. And Zerglings doing what damage they can, taking a bunch of Stalkers. And I think there's the GG from Ares. Uh, we did have a Zergling counterattack down here as well, doing some minor damage. And there's just no mining for Ares. And Tila was barely able to defend. And that was just a really, really close uh, late game PvZ. Uh, very exciting. Most people. Most times, even I think that the late game uh, metagame in PvZ is quite dull sometimes with the make it or break it vort vortices, but uh, Tilo doing a good job not getting too many of his units sucked into them uh, until that one Infestor won, which actually gave Ares a chance to win the game. But uh, still, Tilo was able to defend at home, and just it requires such great attention to positioning and micro. Like remember, like down here, those the use of the stalkers to run around and then blink up after those brood lords. Uh, that small army right here of zealots engaging the zerglings. There's some great micro and uh, just great play overall in this game. It was very fun to watch. Uh, two great players be basically allowed to get to hive tech and uh, mothership tech late game as quickly as possible, and basically just go have at it. And TLO showed that he's one of the best players in the world, frankly, at handling kind of wacky situations like that, and he handled himself well. And takes the game with some good counterattacks and some good push timings. And that's, I don't know, there's a lot There's a lot in that game to talk about. But, um, well, that's the game. A uh, good little 42-minute game there. So thank you guys for watching this much-delayed 10th episode of TLO Party. And I look forward to casting more games for you in the future.